Hey guys, uh, back again. I just wanted to talk about something. I've been getting a lot of comments about this and a lot of questions about this actually uh, through different, you know, the comments in, in my YouTube videos and comments elsewhere, stuff like that, asking questions about broadheads. Uh, but I uh, wanted to talk about this a little bit today. Uh, and a lot of the questions that I get are, um, you know, I have a X, X, Y, Z poundage bow my draw length is this, what kind of broadhead do you recommend? Uh, I have a lot of questions about, well, do you, you know, do you recommend a three blade or a two blade? Do you recommend a single bevel or a double bevel broadhead? Okay. <clears throat> I have some thoughts on all of those things. <clears throat> the one thing that I will tell you is, you know, I had an old man tell me a long time ago because he took me fishing and I had my, you know, my tackle box with me and everything else and we went out because I, we fish, you know, in the bays and stuff like that on, on the coast down here. And I had a tackle box full of lures, all different colors, different sizes, and everything else. And he had, he had a little bitty tackle box about this big. This was decades ago when this happened. <laughs> and uh, he looked at me, uh, he said, man, he said, you got enough fishing tackle with you? And I said, yes, sir, I'm ready for anything. And he said, well, uh, you know, if they're not biting white, or black or red they ain't there so you're not gonna catch anything he said you don't need all them fishing lures and so that got me to thinking a little you know a little while later and sure enough through research uh, and using it and and working with it and 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 doing it actually I figured out pretty quick that he was 99.9% .9 right about that you don't have to have uh, everything that that you know that looks good to you or whatever or what other people say and, and what I mean by that is, is I, I read this somewhere I don't know where I read, read it if I could figure it out I would certainly share it with you guys but just like fishing lures you know uh, I, I found out later on when the internet gets going and everything else that fishing lures if you go into a tackle shop and there's a thousand different shapes a thousand different colors all kinds of configurations and everything else. Well, what happens is, is these fish, these lure companies and fish and tackle companies, what they do is they market to you, to the consumer, not necessarily on its effectiveness. Okay. Now, all fishing lures will will catch a fish. Okay, uh, but do you actually need 35 different colors to to catch a fish? Well, same thing with a broadhead. Uh, in the last couple of decades, a lot of people and a lot of companies have come out with their own versions of uh, broadheads. And they come in all different kind of weird shapes and sizes. Uh, you know, two blade, three blade, five blade, uh, flipper blades, all kinds of stuff. And the consumers are buying it because of the marketing that's behind it. Okay? So, uh, I'm not personally trying to sell you anything. What I talk about is what I use and what, what I know works. Okay, so I, I don't own a broadhead company. I don't own any kind of company, but I will talk about what, what works for me and it has worked for me uh, since I was very young bow hunting. Uh, between a two blade and a three blade broadhead, some would, this, this is a debate that will never be over with. Some people say that you have to have a three blade because it cuts, you know, cuts a hole and when, you know, the blood trail's a lot better and everything else. And then some people say, well, a two blade will penetrate deeper because of, you know, because of the shape of it, whatever. That, that, that whole debate has been going on forever and it will continue to go on. Me personally, I think either one of them's fine. Okay. A three blade or two blade. My preference, uh, what I use, is a two-blade broadhead. Uh, and <clears throat> I'll tell you why that I, I do that. Uh, mainly is because I know it works. Uh, it, you know, I can't, I don't have any scientific studies to say that one penetrates more than the other or a blood trail is better than, than one or the other other than actual field use. I don't have any problems taking game, whether it's deer, hogs, or whatever, with a two-blade broadhead. I don't have any problems with that. Now, on a marginal hit, you hit it somewhere that's not in the vitals, in a gut shot, or you know, high up, in the, up on their shoulder, or something like that. I don't necessarily know that any broadhead is going to perform very well doing that. Um, some people are going to argue that, too, that there's some kind of magic broadhead that doesn't matter where you hit them, 
that's going to kill them. Well, that may very well be true, but I stick to stuff that works, uh, that I know works. And a couple examples right here is, is, is Grizzly, 185 grain or 200 grain, I can't remember. Uh, and these, these are 190 grain of Boyer broadheads, okay? These are more of a traditional shape, uh, but they're single bevel. And, you know, the Grizzlies are single bevel. They're about an inch and eighth wide in the back, you know, three to one cutting ratio and all that. Now, three to one cutting ratio stands out in my head because Dr. Ashby did a whole study on this, like years, shooting actual big game animals in Africa and talking about broadhead shapes, uh, bevel design, uh, the, the, you know, the length and width of the broadhead and all that stuff. I mean, he did a, an entire study on this and you can find it, I'm pretty sure on the internet. Uh, I don't know if it's free or not, but I'm sure you can find it. Um, people like Howard Hill, he shot something similar to that. You know, um, you, everybody knows who Fred Barry is. He shot a broadhead that was more traditional style like this. His was a double bevel, so the bear, the bear razor head, uh, which I've hunted with them for a very, very long time. Because basically, 40 years ago, that was about, you either had that choice, you could shoot uh, uh, bear razor heads or something like that, or ace, and that was it. There wasn't too many of them sitting on the shelf anywhere. So uh, that's what we hunted with, and they worked fine. You know, 125 grain broadhead glued on a wood arrow that, that's sharp will we'll certainly take an animal. Now, I'm not going to ever say uh, that a, a single bevel is better than a double bevel or a, uh, a three blade is better than a two blade or vice versa. I'm not going to I'm not going to make those claims again. I'm just I just know what works for me um, now talking about these people asking uh, what weight or what size broadhead do I prefer two or three? I just, I've already answered that question. Two blade broadhead for me works fine. Uh, the, the one thing I will say about a three blade in my own experience. Now I know there's a lot of guys out there who love them and hunt with them religiously and they won't hunt with anything else, but a three blade broadhead like the Wenzel woodsman or something like that. Uh, and the old, uh, the old, um, Oh, the, I think the VPA, I think, is what makes it. But they used to call them something else. I can't, I'll think of it in a minute during this video. But, uh, you know, th those kind of broadheads, to me, I, I just not, I was never good enough to get them sharp enough where I felt like they were sharp enough to hunt with. Okay, that, that, that was my whole thing. Uh, if I was comfortable with them enough to where I could get them sharp every single time and very quickly, I might be hunting with three blades. I don't know. But two blades, uh, I, they're easy to sharpen. Uh, they, they hold an edge and they perform. So uh, I quit looking for the next best thing, you know, a very, very long time ago. I stick with what works. I I'll show you something here. I, I just got a, I just got an order in here of uh, five packs of these these Grizzly broadheads, and. You know that'll that'll last me a good while. I, I like them. Uh, you know I've got a bunch of arrows with broadheads on them, but I'm making up a. I'll just crest it and stain some shafts right here. I'm fixing to put some fletching on them, and uh, as soon as they've been laying around for two or three weeks, they ought to be good and ready to, to fletch. I'm gonna deck them all out with some with some grizzly broadheads. Uh, you know these these right here. They're, I'm not gonna say any broadheads fail safe. Uh, a marginal hit is a marginal hit. If you hit a deer or an animal, any kind of animal in the vitals, as long as your broadhead is solidly built and it's sharp, it will certainly penetrate or it should penetrate deep enough, uh, barring anything, some kind of deflection from something. Uh, if you hit it right in the vitals with a good sharp broadhead, it's gonna perform fine. Uh, my, the whole message of this video is, 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 you know, to all the guys that are asking questions and also newcomers that are getting started and they're looking at YouTube videos and are uh, flipping through catalogs or whatever and they see these these broadheads and they just look wicked. I mean, they, they look like they, they're devastating. Well, you don't necessarily want to get caught up in the hype with that because number one, you may be spending more than what, you may be spending more than what they're actually worth, okay, based on that hype. Uh, or, uh, you buy this thing expecting 
you know, just above and beyond performance when you can own something, you know, something more along these lines, a Grizzly or something like that, that is, you know, half or a third of the price. Okay. I'm not always saying that, that price dictates what you use, but I am saying that you don't have to spend a hundred dollars on three broadheads to get a lethal broadhead arrow combination. I'm, you just don't have to do that. There's no reason for that. So the marketing is awesome for some of these and I see some really wing shape, whatever kind of broadheads and all that kind of stuff and people swear by them. Uh, and they're not even getting paid. They're not, you know, sponsors are not paying them or whatever. They, they just love them and that's the best thing ever. What it all boils down to is a personal choice, okay, about what you shoot or what you want to shoot or whatever. But uh, the where I'm trying to weigh in is practicality, uh, the economics behind it, and and the actual results you get from what tools you're using when you're hunting. So I hope this helps. Uh, if anybody has any questions, just get down there in the comments. I'll be glad to try to answer any questions I can. And I always say, if I don't know the answer to it, I bet I know somebody that does. So. Uh, and like and share these videos. I really appreciate that and, and subscribe if you haven't ever if you're not subscribed to my channel I got a lot of videos talking about this very topic and uh, So I hope you guys are enjoying this stuff and we'll see you on the next one